Hello viewers, we're in Egypt! Yes, just when you thought it was over, we're back. Except on this series, we're not going to be doing any extreme challenges. I think you'll forgive us, we just walked across you know, 700 kilometers of Jordan. So yeah, this was technically meant to be a holiday. But we're not going to start here. We're going to go down to Hagada, have a little bit of a break, a bit of hotel and R&R. &R. And then I thought it'd be more interesting to work our way up to the pyramids. So we haven't been and seen the pyramids yet. That's going to be the uh, the finale, the, the, the climax, if you will. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're going to do Aswan, Luxor, learn about some Egyptian history, learn about its people, its culture. Yeah, do all the same stuff we normally do, except without the blood, sweat and tears this time. So join me as we explore this, I haven't really prepared a speech for this bit, we explore this sandy, exotic land. Exotic? Is it exotic? Sa sandy, dry land. A ancient, sandy, Egypt. Egypt! I bet you hardly recognise these people. <laughs> Me in a shirt, no... Uh, All shaved? Yeah, no, uh, what would you call it? Beard. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a beard, but it was a bit patchy horrible scraggly looking thing <laughs> and look at you looking clean hair, clean hair <laughs> looking nicely dressed for once <laughs> it's actually a funny story we went to um to get some clothes you know just after the trail and they didn't uh, the women's clothes were essentially unavailable we couldn't there, find anything there were no women's shops so, so so i bought one of these tops i got a couple of these which are just like what do you call the material linen shirt yeah like a linen shirt and then the only option we had was to buy Amy the same. <laughs> so Amy ended up with uh, linen shirts too. It but works. she's wearing them, she looks better than I do in them. <laughs> this is I actually, got two. She's wearing men's, men's Luckily shirts. Luckily I could find some shorts and I don't have to wear men's shorts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just a couple observations whilst um, we're up here. And that is that, uh, oh, you can see the sun is just, just going down over there. But yeah, you can see that the, um, the roofs of these buildings don't have gardens on them. And you would think that like this one up here you would turn it into a little sanctuary above the city so that's that's kind of interesting and yeah and the other observation up here is like just the satellites they've got they're everywhere i mean look at them all and it's like this on every roof as far as the eye can see amy and i went today to have some lunch and along the way we were driving up the highway 20 minutes into town and we could see as well that these buildings that don't have uh, you know, that have the exposed brick, I don't have any sort of, you know, paint or anything on the outside, um, seem to kind of typify the character of the city. And they're sort of ubiquitous. We're in a place called uh, Rihanna Pyramid, and it's pretty cheap. It's uh, 26 US dollars, so it's a really cheap place, but it's ideal. It's in and amongst, um, I would say, the more sort of lo the local areas. There's less sort of touristy around here, which suits us perfectly. Um, and it's obviously very close to the pyramids. And I'll show you the room because I think it's awesomely priced, um, you know, considering how nice it is. How would you not have a roof garden when you have a view of the pyramids? <laughs> how would... It's such a missed opportunity. Oh, you can hear the call to prayer going now because the sun's gone down. Still very much in a Muslim country. throughout the city, yeah. isn't it? I'll show you the room now. It might be a bit of a mess, but um, yeah, just to say, we will be doing way more physical challenges as we explore other countries and um, you know learn about their cultures and whatnot. It's just on this particular uh, mini series, there's not going to be any epic challenge. So here we have it again with the single beds. I don't know why it seems all these people are determined to separate me from Amy, but there we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good, isn't it? I mean. So the amount of money we're paying, it's incredible really. Nice hot shower, pretty nice bathroom. I mean, the aircon works really well. The fridge is really cold. It's perfect. See you tomorrow when we're gonna get up and get that bus to Hagada.
It's actually not that much nicer than the place that we stayed at for $26. <laughs> cool. This is what you get for £70. Whoa, luxury. Well, viewers, anyone who knows uh, Amy and I will know that resorts aren't really our thing. But we wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle of Cairo. And so a resort seemed like the perfect place for us to kind of relax and uh, you know just physically recover from the Jordan Trail. Having said that, I do think the people who tend to come here seem to kind of rarely leave the confines of the resort, especially an all-inclusive one like this, um, learn little about the culture of the country they're in and instead sort of engage in a kind of you know overindulgent, boring, hedonistic, repetitive groundhog day. But you know with that being said, uh, I guess resorts you know, kind of have a place. So we thought, on this occasion, why not join them? <laughs> I hope you enjoy the following montage we put together uh, of us enjoying um, this particular resort, Stella Resort, in Hagada. Update, never stay in this hotel. I think my stomach acid's passing through me. <laughs> Final breakfast before we head off to the next place, thank God. <laughs> Horrific night last night. I was up all night with food poisoning. Yeah, I'm not going to go into details, but didn't. suffice to say it wasn't very fun. And today I managed to get some food. No, thank you. So, just having rice, a bit of chicken, and some veg, and a few chips. The safe options from the enormous buffet. Just hit me like a train last night. Amy wasn't feeling well the last few days. And then suddenly I was just like really bad last night. We've noticed that they like repurpose a lot of the food. And they're just reheating a lot of stuff, so I think it might be the food. And also me and Amy both thought it tasted a bit weird at times anyway. So yeah, that's an update. Not fun. Do not recommend. Amy and I are just saying, if you remember from Jordan, when we drank that water from the old 2000 year old theater, there was like that puddle. We filtered it and then put chlorine in it. It was like, it was literally sitting uh, putrid water. <laughs> And we didn't get any issues. And now we come to this hotel. We're here for like just literally two days and we get horrific problems. It's just it's quite funny really, isn't it? Nice safe chips. Safe, safe chips. <laughs> <laughs> not not gonna kill us. The more than that. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion. All these people eating this stuff, no idea what it's going to do to them. Vegetables are safe, right? Some veggies. Just, do oh wow, thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm on chips now because even earlier we noticed that the rice was like chewy and hard. So we think they're even reheating the rice. And it might, even if it is gastro, like you can see the way that like, you have to lift up all of those things. So you're touching everything that everyone else is touching, so you can imagine how something would just like pass through this virus, just like pass through the whole hotel. So it looks amazing. I've only eaten here, so the food here is 
no tan. Yeah. Is this all virus? Yeah, I only see this. Yeah? Okay. I should tell you. Thank you. So I got mobbed by about four managers after I had, had did that video and uh, they weren't very apologetic, same as the other one. But look, the only reason I told them is to clear my conscience. I just felt like I had a responsibility, you know, kind of a duty of care to people who come after us. If I can just make this chef aware that he's making people ill, so he might change a few things. But um, yeah, I mean, the other managers did the same thing. They just sort of said, have you got sunstroke? And this time when the camera's off, I said, I don't remember the last time I got a sunburn and myself. <laughs> It's a real shame because the hotel is nice, like the location's amazing. <laughs> it's a shame because the food is absolutely terrible and like the one thing I require is not to be poisoned. Like that's kind of my number one requirement. <laughs> it puts a real down on the whole thing. Um, but yeah, now we're just off to drop off the towels. Otherwise we lose two 10 euros. Apparently. 20 euro fine if we don't return the towels. One, one other thing that they said to me which was quite funny was like maybe it's the change in food it's like you're not used to egyptian food like suddenly as well like the change from hot weather to cold, from cold weather to hot weather from from england i was like okay first of all it's like i've just walked across jordan i spent six weeks in jordan i was like so it's definitely not the change in food i was like and also i think i'm used to the heat by this point so it's quite funny again you can sort of get a feel for all the various different excuses they try to make rather than just taking responsibility for it and apologizing i don't think they apologized once to me on to better things. I'm already feeling a lot better today, as you can probably tell. Onwards. So after dealing with food poisoning in Haggadah, we're now off to Luxor, where we can start visiting some ancient Egyptian sites and see how the locals live. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning sir. What bus? Yes, please. Yeah. Shukran, thank you, sir. We've gotten off the bus and been immediately hassled by about 50 people. It was so annoying. I said to one guy, like, please go away. He told me to f off. <laughs> so yeah. We're just finding that like the Egyptians, especially when you get off the bus. I was trying to start my bag, like put my backpack into my bag. But I'm busy and this guy's just like shoving paper under my face, being like, take this, take this. And I'm like, no, I don't want it. I was like, no, no, no. I said it five times. Start off nice, saying no thank you, no thank you. And yeah. then... I said it five times and finally I'm like, go away, like loudly. And then he's like, f you, f you. It's like, what the hell's your problem, mate? Like, I don't want you, f like, just leave me alone. We've not had this problem in like Jordan. Uh, and they're not, they're not like this, this pushy in Asia at all, are they? Um, if you say no, they would. If you say no in Asia, like, they go away. Like, they, they do ask you, like, do you want a taxi? And they're like, nah. Even they're like, guys, okay. You say no five times and they still linger. Yeah, that's the you. thing. You say no, like, half a dozen times and they still sort of like, you as you say, they linger around you and just sort of hover. It's like, dude. Anyway, beautiful little streets though. And hopefully through here we'll be coming onto the Nile. But you can see here all the markets and bazaars. Oh. So our hotel's on the other side, plus all the restaurants are on the other side. So we're just gonna get a uh, boat across. We just sort of guess we're going to the other side, but we haven't got 100%, we're not 100% sure. <laughs> but there we have it, the Nile. This is much more like it. And you can see the Nile here. Hello. It's amazing gr how green it all is. Yes, you can see how fertile the Nile is. And I don't want to be too cliche, but it's already immediately obvious what a powerful asset this would have been historically. Unfortunately, we still have this rubbish problem. Burning the rubbish over there. Look at these dogs here. Salam, salam. But yeah, it's beautiful. I like this because our hotel is just a little bit outside, which is fine because we're going to do day trips into the city of Luxor for the full tour and see Karnak, the very famous temple of Karnak, where a lot of the most important history of ancient Egypt took place. 
um, that power struggle between priest and pharaoh. Um, so we've got that to look forward to. But yeah, this is definitely me and Amy's more natural environment going into the city to see the pharaohs, all the fun history stuff, but really being in and amongst the banana trees. Yeah, 100%. Wait, wait, I can't hear you, what did you say? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the banana flower, which I'm sure a lot of people won't have seen. And you can actually, you can actually eat this. This looks like our hotel at the end of the banana plantation. It doesn't look complete. Maybe. It's funny though, because remember I was talking in Cairo about that typical building you get in Egypt with the sort of exposed stonework. Looks like we're staying in one of those. And I felt like that was something that really sort of gave Cairo its character. So we've been told to sit and wait here in the what looks like half complete hotel. It's got good reviews there, hasn't it? What's it got? It's even apparently got a pool to it. It's got a pool on the roof, supposedly. Oh, it's got 4.7 out of 30. Is this two. like one of those like Instagram versus reality things? Well, this is on Google, it's got 4.7. 4.7, well I'll be the judge of that because the last hotel had a bloody 4.8 and it nearly killed me. Things are looking up again. I think we're going to get another diamond in the rough here. After our experience of Stella McCarty, <laughs> Stella McCrappy, we are now in another lovely little place that was £28 a night, £27 yeah. pound a night. So budget again. But look how nice it is. This is beautiful. Looking over the, just over the tops of the banana trees. Lovely spacious room. Everything we need. Yeah. Last things all right. And mm. the, the guy that checked us in is also the guy that's doing, uh, he's the chef, so he's going to be doing us dinner, so nice home cooked dinner as well. And we're not on the, we're not having the food with the masses anymore. We're getting food cooked just for us, which is great. I actually really like the unfinished. I do too. <laughs> yeah. Get a nice breeze. So we've got the restaurant, the restaurant in here. I like this, it's got real character. You can see out over the other buildings out there, all these beautiful brick buildings. He's got his farm down there. Oh, he's got, there's a cow in there. And then through there is a swimming pool kitchen and they brought us water and they've also brought us a little soup i hope you're watching people of stella mccarty this is how you look after people isn't it Amy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is lovely we didn't even order any of this they've just given it to us <laughs> yeah. this is not we ordered tagine each and they've given us all this so presumably all for free still bubbling in there i've got a curry tagine it smells beautiful. Amy's got a uh, vegetable. vegetable tagine. But look at this, at really healthy food. I, I can't begin to tell you how much we've needed health. Because when we were ill at the hotel, you may recall, all I was eating was chips, because that was the only thing I knew was coming out of a bag, because we saw it coming out of a frozen bag. And now the gentleman is bringing rice. It's an absolute feast. Look at Thank this. you. Oh, lovely. Look at this. Yeah, lovely. Amazing. Shukran, thank you, sir. Thank you. Got rice and everything. Our bodies are going to thank us for this. We've actually got some health in us. Yesterday we had maccas as well, because I wasn't, wasn't like sure I could eat anything. That, I just knew maccas weren't going to kill us, basically. Yeah. Just an update. It's been like over a week now. And I still, still can't feel my toes. <laughs> still can't feel my toes. Um, yeah. Just next to this pool here, you can see the banana plantation that we walked through when we came up from the river down there. Um, and yeah, it really is verdant. It is vivid, luscious green, almost as far as the eye can see. It's so nice as well because it's not like a tourist area. So it very much feels like you're in and amongst the sort of day-to-day -day Luxor life, as it were. And uh, you know we've got some beautiful views across the Nile. And again, as cliche as it is, you can almost imagine, you know, how some of these views would have looked quite similar back in the day. It's 
here I am having a beer looking over the Nile. And you may be thinking, oh, he's just getting on the piss like he would be doing in any other country uh, in the sunshine on holiday. But I'm actually partaking in a traditional Egyptian activity. That's right. Beer um, was brewed in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, and drank in large quantities, particularly at religious festivals, um, you know, in celebrations and gatherings. It was a drink that was more associated with, you know, the lower or the lower or middle income, you know, families, whereas I think wine was more reserved for the sort of upper class. So, you know, it was, you know, Gav and Terry down the pub in ancient Egypt having a few beers. So I think I'd get into this one, if I'm honest. <laughs> And this particular beer is a Stella, and it says on it, uh, authentic, I don't think it's that, authentic Egyptian lager beer. Well, yeah, it says since 1897 on it, but, you know, I think that they should be putting on it since, you know, 2500 BC. Yeah, old Stella here might have missed a trick, in my opinion, with the old marketing, but yeah. Here you go, this is, this is from the British Museum. In ancient Egypt, it was consumed daily and in great quantities at religious festivals and celebrations. It was essential for labourers, Gav and Terry, like those who built the Pyramids of Giza, who provided with a daily ration of one, one and one third gallons, over 10 pints. Yet it still had divine status with several gods and goddesses associated with beer. Hathor, the goddess of love, dance and beauty, was also known as the Lady of Drunkenness. And Hathor is the god that you will see depicted in many uh, monuments as um, a feminine form and she has cow ears. Um, yeah, I find that really interesting. Look at this, out here, Look at these boats going past on the Nile. I mean, you couldn't ask for a much more Egyptian scene, really, could you? Another lovely breakfast. Got fruit, fresh um, falafel, which is had, it's really good. A nice fresh omelette, bread. <laughs> Amy and I are just saying, as we finish off our breakfast here, leave those Western preconceptions at the door as you walk down a banana plantation to get to this place and see that it's half finished. The guy said, yeah, it's half finished. We're just sort of, you know, we need to get the money to finish the next few levels above. But this place is a marvel because as you can see, it's one of the only tall buildings um, on each side. A unique opportunity to kind of see village life below you, the farms, the cows, there's a guy over there tending to his field. Yeah, it's just a very unique opportunity to sort of see um, a bird's eye view of this sort of daily life in a rural uh, Egyptian town like this. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Like, look at this bloke over here carrying a bag on his shoulder. And then you can see behind the mountains, the rivers. Um, and then, of course, this, as I said yesterday, up here, it's, it's so, uh, so much character, it's beautiful. And we're going to be getting a tuk-tuk, -tuk, I imagine, to the other side of the bank. And today we'll be exploring Karnak. So this isn't going to be like a vlog around traveling around Egypt. This is going to be one of those historical summaries I do, giving you all the core history um, you know, of a specific historical site. I get really excited doing this. Um, also nervous because I feel like a great sense of responsibility not to stuff it up and give people the wrong information. I did try to understand all the things that it should have been. I got caught in the of it. Now I'm getting really sick of it.